October last year, two brothers camping in the woods across the reservoir just behind me made a gruesome discovery. They came across human remains. What was left of a body had been there for some time, but it was clear the person had been murdered. Detectives began to build a picture of who this might be, and just last month had a major breakthrough. Each year, the stunning, rugged landscape of North Wales plays host to the motorsport event, Wales Rally GB. In November, as the rally entered its final stages, two brothers camped out in remote forests nearby. I've been going to rally every year, probably since I was about five. Um, my father used to take us. Big rally fans. Uh, I'd only been a couple of times when I was younger, so I came up to watch it with him. I haven't been for years. So we go in the woods to find somewhere suitable to have a little fire, just have a few beers. Your turn again. <laughs> Seems to be always my turn. Mark went off to find some firewood. Um, I walked about 10, 15 yards away from my brother and uh, I found some bones on the floor. And then on closer inspection, realised that they're actually human remains. We received a call to say that uh, two brothers had made the discovery of what they believed to be uh, human remains. We sent local officers to make an assessment and they concluded that it was part of a human body. We had to set a, a strategy to ensure that we maximised all available forensic recovery from this location. It was a painstaking examination. The body was uh, fully decomposed. But over a period of two weeks, we managed to find and recover almost the full skeletal remains of an adult male. The injuries to the body were suspicious. The male suffered significant head trauma. We believe this person had been killed. But we didn't know who this person was and who may have been responsible for that killing. Forensic scientists began building a picture of the victim. The post-mortem procedure gave us a lot of clues. The man uh, was beyond 54 years of age at the time of death, but probably uh, in his 60s. He was between 5 foot 8 and 5 foot 10 and a half in height. Uh, had suffered some injuries during his life, a fracture to his nose. We also know that he suffered from arthritis and also uh, would have had a problem with his spine that would have caused him uh, limited mobility uh, in as much as there was some fusion of the spine. Detectives also turned to forensic odontologist Dr. John Rosie for help. The first thing that was apparent was that all the posterior molar teeth were absent. Now, that to me indicated that that person wasn't particularly dentally aware in his younger years. And then all of a sudden, the pennies dropped because his premolar teeth have got some very extensive crown work, root canal work and filling work, which is of a high quality. Now, the style of the dentistry is typical of dentistry that was done in the 90s, 2000, possibly late 80s. This description also appears in dental journals in the hope that it will jog a dentist's memory about work that he has completed. Two items of badly decomposed clothing were also recovered near the scene. Fragments from a jumper and what appeared to be the label from some underwear. We did find two items that may be connected to the body. We were able to identify that uh, the label emanated from a pair of Marks and Spencer's men's underwear manufactured in 1999. And we were also able to identify that the textile emanated from the Pringle jumper that was manufactured between the years 2000 and 2004. It was green in colour, size extra large. 
Detectives worked tirelessly to find the identity of the victim, but were still missing a vital piece of the jigsaw. They turned to a leading forensic artist. North Wales Police contacted us because they wanted a facial depiction to be produced in the hope that would lead to identification. We look at the skull and from the shape and size of the skull and the position of, and uh, degree of the muscle attachments, we predict the shape of the muscles and from the shape of the muscles we predict the shape of the face. We take measurements um, and uh, assess the teeth to tell us about the lips. We look at the sides and base of the skull to tell us about the ears. We look at the orbits to tell us about the eyes. We can slowly build the skull into the facial appearance of the living individual. This face is quite a strong male face, um, quite deep set eyes. Uh, although the nose has been previously broken, looks quite straight. And because of the loss of a large number of teeth, he would have had quite sunken cheeks. The details that we're uncertain of are those things that we can't tell from looking at the bone. So skin colour exactly, eye colour, hair colour. Um, he hasn't got an incredibly characteristic face. He hasn't got a massive nose or a cleft chin. But hopefully the overall appearance should spark something. If somebody knew him, they may be able to recognise something in there. This is going to be really significant. There will be a loved one, friends, family that may recognise this person. Once we get to the name, we can work on why did this person become uh, a victim? Who would be responsible for that? And why would they want to have killed him? It's just a bit sad, you know, that he's been here for that long. And people have been driving past probably daily and not, not realise he was here. It's not easy. I'm reminded about it every day, really. I think about it pretty much every day, that some, someone's lost their life up here and that no one found them. It would have to be us to find him. It is an intriguing case. We're going to discuss how you can help in just a moment. But first, I went to look around the crime scene itself, just across the reservoir from here, on the Denby Moors with Detective Superintendent Yestin Davis. Yestin, they were camping just up there. They were indeed about 100 yards just up this track from here, Jeremy. And the rally was about 300 yards that way? As the crow flies, about 300 yards that way, yes. And these two brothers come into the forest here looking for firewood. Uh, they enter this part of the forest and one of the brothers came to this location to collect some wood. And it was at this very point that the skull was found, covered in, in, in moss uh, and undergrowth. Clearly been here for some time. Right, so the skull was here, and you found other remains. We did indeed. Um, we conducted a, an examination that took about uh, two to three weeks, uh, and we recovered from this location more or less the full skeleton remains of, of a male. We've cut away a lot of the trees, so it was quite dense uh, and quite uh, a challenging examination. But you found it? We did. Well, Yestin is with me now live, and it's just remarkable that you've managed to actually rebuild a face from, from the bones. Yes, Jeremy, this is really significant for our investigation. We've managed to get full facial reconstruction of the man. Uh, we've got three images today, the first of which is the man how he would have looked in his 50s. We've got further two images uh, of how the man would look like in his 60s and 70s, because at this moment in time, I can't be certain of the age. Well, it's extraordinary to see those on the screen there. And this area is very remote. We've been here all day today. How do you think the victim came to be here, and crucially, when? Jeremy, I think he was uh, killed elsewhere. This is a deposition site. We know that that area of forest was planted in 1985, and it's our... Uh, belief that that body would have been deposited at that location sometime between 1995 and 2005. That's based on the tree growth and also the decomposition of the body. And you actually have a full DNA profile of the victim? 
Yes, significant for ourselves. We've got a full DNA profile. Unfortunately, it doesn't match anyone on the national database. However, I would ask for anyone who thinks they may recognise this person to contact, contact us and give us the name so we can progress the investigation. Because the key thing is first you identify him and then you identify the person who killed him. Indeed, that's going to be really important for us. And I'll also ask for people from the medical profession to get in touch with us. We've discussed the, the spinal uh, damage uh, to the body uh, and also um, the previous fractures. Uh, and there might be someone from the dental profession who might recognise their own work here. Ultimately, this is someone's loved one. I need to find out who this person is so that my investigation can progress. Thank you, Yestin, very much indeed. Let's just take one more look at the image if we can. If you've got any idea who this might be, please call us now on 08 085 600 600. Calls are free from landlines and mobile phones and the numbers will be on screen throughout the programme.